suppose F is a vector field on the plane. In other words, it's a vector valued function of two variables, X and Y, and the two components I'm going to call F1 and F2. You could do this in higher dimensions, I'm going to stick with the plane. The divergence of F is written in this unusual way. Uh, it's just the quantity df1 by dx plus df2 by dy. If you add more variables, there'd be more terms like df3 by dz. Um, and I want to tell you where this came from, where this mysterious formula originated geometrically. So um, you can't get much more geometrical than a rectangle, so let me draw a rectangle. This is a rectangle of side length epsilon. And let me suppose that it's um, based at this point, x, y. So this vector here, from here to here, is going to be epsilon 0. From here to here, it's going to be 0 epsilon. And despite appearances, epsilon is going to be really small. So epsilon is going to be small. In fact, in the end, epsilon is going to go to 0, the way it usually does. So what's the vector field? A vector field is a vector at each point. Um, so in particular, this is maybe f of x, y. At this point we've got uh, a different vector. It's much longer, this one. But what is this? Well, this is f at this point here, which differs from x, y by epsilon. So it's f plus epsilon, and then it differs by zero in the y direction, so it's just comma y. And over here maybe we've got another another vector, which is maybe pointing more up. And this one is uh, f of x comma y plus epsilon. Right, it's based at this point, which is x y plus zero epsilon. In other words, it's x y plus epsilon. And I'm going to imagine that I'm flowing along this vector field in time. So that's kind of a difficult thing to do, so all I'm really going to do is shift, translate along these vectors. Translate this corner along this vector, this corner along this vector, and this corner along this vector for a time t. So it'll move a proportion t along this vector. And t is also going to be small. What happens to this square? Well, it'll end up looking like this. Now, I haven't told you how it happens to this fourth point, but I'm just going to draw a parallelogram. I'm only interested in these three points and how they move, so I'm interested in the area of this parallelogram. And the claim is that this quantity here, this divergence, is the rate of change um, so like d by dt of the area of this parallelogram. So let me give it a name. It's drawn in green, so let's call it pt. So p0 is this square, it's epsilon by epsilon square, and the divergence is going to be the rate of change of the area. Um, okay. I guess this is only approximately true. I should also divide by the area, but uh, let me let me say that here. So it's the rate of change of the area normalized by the area. So how do I compute the area? Right, I need to find the area of a parallelogram. Well, uh, the area of a parallelogram A and B sides. And let's say A is uh, A1, A2, and B is B1, B2. And the area is given by the formula A1, B2, minus A2, B1. Now, you might be worried about this sign. right? This could be a negative number, but you can always switch the sign by switching A and B. So this is really an oriented area. Don't worry about it. Right, so I want to find A and B from this picture. This is A, and this is B. 
So what's A? Well, A is the difference between two vectors. It's the difference between this vector here and this vector. I guess the other way around, right? It's this vector here minus this vector because it goes from here to here. So in other words, A is this it's f of f plus epsilon of x plus epsilon y. And there's a factor of t outside. Um, plus, and I'll put it over here, plus epsilon 0, and then minus this f of x, y. I'm, I'm writing it in this slightly odd order for reasons which will soon become apparent, I hope. Okay, so let me let me write f in components just to, for a bit more familiarity, right? Okay, and there's a factor of t in front of all of these, all of these f terms. Okay, so that's a. There's a similar expression for b, but first let's let's look at this expression for a and see what we can see. Well, at least some of this should look familiar, right? This here. If epsilon is very very small, I can use Taylor's approximation to write down what this is, because this looks a lot like a derivative. So this is approximately equal to t times df1 by dx, right? It's only in the first x variable that we're adding epsilon and then taking the difference. Um, and of course I should have an epsilon there because I'm moving epsilon along in the x direction. Um, and similarly the second one is df2 by dx epsilon. And then I have this plus epsilon zero. So that's why I kept that separate. And similarly, b is approximately equal to t times df1 by dy epsilon df2 by dy times epsilon plus 0 comma epsilon. Okay, so I can just plug these guys into this formula. What do I get? Let me just see how much room I have. Let me move the thing over a bit. Right, so um, A1, B2. A1, B2 is, well, A1 is the first component of A, so it's this top row here. It's epsilon from this here plus epsilon T DF1 by DX. And B2 is the second component here. So again, we've got epsilon, we've got epsilon t df2 by dy. Um, and I'll simplify this a little bit, right? I'll take out a factor of epsilon and another factor of epsilon. So I have 1 plus, and um, let me multiply out the brackets, right? I get I get 1 plus um, t times df1 by dx plus df2 by dx, uh, d by dy now, and then plus a t, t squared times this times this. But let me just write that as order t squared, because if you look back over here, t is supposed to be very small. So t squared is even smaller. So I can forget about t squared. Okay, but this is looking good. This here is the divergence. This is the quantity that we've got up at the top of the page. So let's continue. We, we need to take a1b2 minus a2b1. So what's a2b1? Well, it's, um, it's this second component, which is... Uh, t epsilon df2 by dx and b1 is just this component t epsilon df1 by dy and here we've got a t and a t so this is just order a, order t squared All right it's got a t squared in we can forget about it because t is small so really the area of this parallelogram is given by this expression here it's epsilon squared times 1 plus epsilon squared times t 
times the divergence of f. Okay, so what's the derivative? What's the plus second order terms in t? So what's the first order term? The first order term is here. It's the the derivative. So the rate of change in t is uh, is uh, the is nabla dot f. In other words, the uh, divergence. times the area epsilon squared, which gives precisely this formula that the divergence is the rate of change of the area divided by the area. 